morning. I'm trying to record a podcast. Hey, everyone. It's Your Natural Dog with Angela Ardolino. And my guest today is Rachel Fusaro. I met her about three years ago now and instantly fell in love. She was wearing a t-shirt that said, save all the damn dogs. And I knew she was my kind of people. She's a wonderful rescuer, trainer, filled with amazing information, um, a nutritionist, and she works for a wonderful raw food company um, that specializes in ketogenic diets. So we're going to talk about that. What of her best? What her are her best tips, and how we can uh, help our dogs live happy and healthy longer. This is Blanche, and she's the most noodleish dog you've ever met in your entire life. She's just the most loved dog you've ever met, but if you leave her alone, it becomes a total opposite thing. Blanche has severe separation anxiety to the point where she will scratch doors down to the wood, bark all night, cry if you leave her for five minutes. Um, I tried the collars, I tried the sprays, I tried thunder blankets. The only thing that's ever worked was CBD, and that's why I got started in this business. Our calm tincture is 550 milligrams of full spectrum CBD and lavender. It's the perfect remedy for separation anxiety, anxiety, stress, or fear. I love my dog, and I hated knowing that she was home freaking out. So I wanted to find an all natural way to do it. No doggy Prozac, all natural. And once I found CBD, there's no other option. CBD dog health, healing naturally. Hey, Rachel, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are, I want to kind of like talk with you for my audience about, you know, I don't know if people get to talk to a pet influencer or even know what the heck that is, but um, you're one of my favorites. I love um, your tips are quick and easy. Uh, and I know that you've been doing this for a while and you have such a huge following but I want to know first how the heck <laughs> great you question. A pet um, so first off, thanks for having me. Super excited to to be here. Uh, so you know, you bet. Becoming an influencer, such a funny word, or a creator in the pet space, happened pretty organically and naturally. I about five or six years ago was really heavily involved in the rescue dog community and was fostering rescue dogs. Uh, in wild amounts. I mean, within a two-year period, I had fostered uh, almost 60 dogs to help rehab them and find them their forever homes. And wow. it really became all-encompassing within my life because there's just so much passion there. I've been heavily involved with animals since I was a child. So what would happen is I found that when dogs were in um, foster care, meaning that you take your volunteer with like a rescue or shelter, you take the dog in that um, otherwise would have been euthanized in the Humane Society or Pound, etc. And you care for them until they get adopted. But the problem is, is the only way to really promote these dogs is through pictures on a website. And so I wanted to start documenting the stories of my foster dogs to help them find homes faster and to help them find a better fit so that we would reduce the amount of dogs that were returned. Um, and so I was volunteering with a lab rescue in Central Texas, one of the largest ones, and we were just always over capacity. So I was like, there's got to be a way. So fast forward, I started making little clips of videos and then those turned into more YouTube videos. And from there, it just grew because people, I'll never forget the rescue reaching out to me saying, hey, Rachel, there's now a waiting list. There's a waiting list of people that only want to adopt one of the Labradors that you fostered that you created little videos on because they really got a chance to get wow. to know the dog. Uh, and I loved being able to showcase the ups and the downs of the dog so that, again, we found them the right fit. Uh, so from there... Because so yeah. many people don't understand that... When you adopt a dog, whether it's a rescue or not, there is a time period that your dog needs to get used to its new surroundings, its home, its new parents, its new everything. So whether that means they're going to act out or not do things the way you want, you've got to give them that at least three months Absolutely. to get uh, to I, a new home, right? Because so I know most of my most of my rescues yep. are been rescued and returned and and you know a, a fail a rescue fail and then i get them and i'm sure you get them 
and work with them and document it absolutely. and understand absolutely. what I mean, they're going through. I even tell people I would give them a solid year before they really come into their own. Um, and so absolutely, I've, I've had the same experience. And so that's really how it grew. And it started with just documenting the stories of these dogs. But what happened over time is I started getting questions uh, in the comments a lot saying, hey, Rachel, you brought this dog in two weeks ago. And after two weeks, they, their skin and coat seems already so much better. Their behavior seems so much better. They're already leash trained, crate trained. Like, how did you do it? What products did you use? What methods did you use? And so uh, it really, by following the, the desire, the demands really of the viewers, I started sharing more tips and tricks. And that's really what my channel took off in my social media. And I think it's taken me a couple of years to figure it out because the funny thing is I'm not a professional dog trainer, though a lot of people think that I am. Uh, my degree's in human nutrition of all things. And so I know it's, it's, it's funny how that works out, <laughs> but I think because I had to find creative, easy, and really relatable ways to help dogs achieve certain behavioral goals like crate training or separation anxiety really quickly because I was feeling, you know, I was on the board at the rescue for quite some time and I was seeing all the incoming requests for dogs that had, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours to be euthanized. And the longer these dogs were in foster care, the less dogs were able to help. So I became really passionate about finding just really quick, easy ways to help these dogs achieve whatever goal that we wanted. And I did that from the lens just of a regular dog mom, right? Not from this formal training, not from uh, taking a specific class, but just from working through the, the, the ups and downs of it. And I think people really were able to relate to that. And that's really led me to where I am today. Well, that and you're extremely trustworthy. And as we know, both of us being in the pet industry know that it's really hard to find someone with the right intent that you can trust. So the moment, because the same thing happened to me, you know, you start doing one thing and all the questions start coming in and you're like, oh, whoa, all right, well, let's, let's educate, which you're a big educator, I'm a big educator. Um, but I want to know, what are they asking? What is like the most popular questions um, that you find yourself constantly year, every year kind of doing, okay, yeah, yeah. here it is again. <laughs> so Take first and foremost, <laughs> it is mostly, what am I feeding my dogs? Why do I feed what I feed? How much to feed, which I find that one interesting. Um, and then, you know, also the different life stages, like I have a puppy, what do I feed? And not even just food, it's treats and chews, foods, supplements, it's anything that the dog is digesting or eating. Um, that's definitely the most popular question I get. And really close second to that is anything puppy. Uh, I Some some people joke around and call Is it one yeah, of your most viral videos? Is yeah, puppy um, training definitely. Video? Is. You know, it's funny, the, the first video that really popped off for me years ago was how to convince your parents, this is targeted to kids, how to convince your, yeah, how to convince oh, your yeah, parents I to get remember. you a puppy. And a lot of my friends in the rescue community was like, that's horrible. You don't want kids to, to ask their parents for a puppy. But when you watch the video, the whole video is I do this like PowerPoint right. teaching kids that, you know, getting a puppy is a lot of work. So the first step is volunteer at your humane society, get your parents to go with you and do that, and then go foster a puppy. And that way um, I was encouraging rescuing. And when you foster a dog, it really gives the family the opportunity to say, okay, we can't handle this, but at least they're helping out. Uh, exactly. But yeah, anything around puppies, uh, potty training, crate training, and puppy biting are the three questions I get probably about 50 to 100 times every single day across all my platforms. It's to the point I can't keep up. Uh, so I just continue to create content around that. And my methods are very simple and straightforward, but I just try to share them in different ways because we all learn differently. I love it. And I love Thank your you. videos. I love how simple they are and how you can get the message across so quickly. And they're yeah. bite sized. Um, and I don't know about everyone else. I'm not a sit down and read yeah. a whole book. I may got to listen to it, want to watch it real quick. Um, so we really appreciate that you. you do that. Um, what people 
you mentioned that you were a nutritionist, um, but you also know much about dog nutrition and what they need, which is so important to, as people know who have listened to my show, it is one of the number one things that you can do to assure that your dog is happy mm -hmm. and healthy. Um, a lot of times, the the reason that Rachel is taking these dogs and fostering them is the same thing that I do when I bring these dogs that have so many um, medical issues and we start removing the prescription meds that they don't need that are hurting them and not helping them. And the biggest thing is changing their food and how important diet is. The biggest thing I have to battle with with people asking me questions about puppies is that their vet is always telling, or most of the time it's their conventional vet, is telling them, look, okay, it's okay if you want to do raw or fresh food, but just the first year of life, yeah. feed them this kibble. Like and the, I'm like, yeah. no, that's the worst time to feed them yeah. just that kibble. Um, yeah. Tell them why. Tell our listeners why it's so important to set them up right um, for yeah, when I mean, when, young puppies. Yeah, I mean, when your dog is a puppy, the rate that they grow and develop both physically, biologically, and mentally is the fastest and the most that they will over their entire lifetime. And we have to remember our dog's life's lifespans, right? Are what is the average age span now? Eight to 12 years old, eight to 10 years old. So it's really a large percentage of their growth and development is in those early, that first one to two years. So it's absolutely the most critical time that if you were only gonna feed a real fresh food diet, if, if I had to pick one lifespan or time period, it would definitely be, be puppyhood. Uh, and that's when, you know, both on the behavioral and the diet side, where they're going to really develop um, allergies or potential health issues or metabolic health issues. It's all going to really start then when they're much younger because everything is developing so quickly. So um, I'm huge, huge advocate of, of starting them right away, day one. That's always what I'm, people are asking. Okay, I see, you know, I'm, I'm into this raw food. Like, when do you think, when do you think I should start feeding that? Or when should I start working on crate training? And every, pretty much every time my answer is day one, as soon as they're weaned from their mom, right? About eight weeks old, day one, you bring them home. That's when I recommend to start adding some fresh foods to their bowl. If, if you're still going to feed the kibble, um, or getting them hopefully fully on a raw diet and, uh, starting on those behavioral. I remember one of the best tips that I got when bringing a puppy home is don't come inside until it's made its yep. first pee or poo outside wherever yep. you want them to do it um, and then come inside. So like just simple things like that. And people need to realize if you're feeding your dog a kibble diet that is not feeding what they need, their body, it can cause uh, behavioral issues. So training a dog um, when it's not being fed the right diet is also more complicated. I'm going to tell a quick story about a boxer who, you know, this family got a puppy and the, the dog is coming out of its skin. Um, and I, they wanted to board it at my shop. I'm like, I need to bring it to the farm. It, he can't be in an apartment or a kennel. He'll go insane. So we bring him to the farm, let him run around. And of course, when they brought him, I got to see what food they fed him. And it was, um, oh my gosh, not kibbles and bits. Gravy uh, train. <laughs> one of the yeah. <laughs> gravy train. Yes. And the number one ingredient is a high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. The number one ingredient. So of course, when they came to pick up the dog, I said, I did not feed your dog this. I fed him a real fresh food diet. I also gave him some full spectrum hemp extract, our CBD calm tincture, CBD dog health calm tincture to help calm him through the process. And now you have a new dog and change the diet. You're feeding him sugar. This is like you're you feeding your kids cheer, um, fruit loops every day with no milk. Uh, there's no nutrition. It's just sugar and crap. And that totally will change a dog's behavior. So I know how important Yeah, absolutely. It is. I'll never forget when I adopted my doodle mix, we did a puppy, a group puppy training class. And in the very beginning of the class, the worst dog was this little puppy Rottweiler. He just could not sit still, this wild, crazy monkey. Uh, and this was a 10, it was like a 10 week class and about five weeks in, I started noticing the dog getting calmer and I thought the owner was just working with him more. Um, long story short, I was sitting next to the owner 
and he was talking about uh, chicken chicken feet and feeding chicken feet. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's great. You're adding some fresh food. And he's like, yeah, my local pet store said I needed to get off of kibble and get on a fresh food diet. So we've been transitioning him. And it's just insane to me that before I even knew that was happening, I saw this behavioral change just by what the dog is eating. And that's what's so interesting to me about all of this is that's the same for humans, right? Like if I have one of those weeks, if I'm traveling and I'm not eating great, I don't feel good. And that's the same thing for dogs. It impacts your, your mood and, and your mind and your development. So, yeah. Absolutely. Great. Well, we're going to um, talk more about a diet because you uh, work for a raw food uh, company and we're going to talk about them and ketogenic diet and how that helps our pets when we come back. Great. This is Daisy. She's our 17 year old rescue and her owner surrendered her to the veterinarian because she couldn't walk anymore. And the vet gave us a call and we rescued her, brought her to our rescue farm here. We took her off all of her uh, prescription medications. She was having seizures every day, grandma seizures. She had no hair on her feet, on her tail. And we have her on a CBD regimen and she has come back to life. She's become puppy-like. She runs around and plays and she could live to be 20 years old and live a very long, happy, pain-free life. CBD Dog Health, healing naturally. Hey, and we're back with Rachel Fusaro, uh, one of my favorite pet influencers that you can find on, I mean, I see you everywhere now, so I love it. I don't miss anything of yours. Uh, we are on TikTok. I know you're on YouTube is where some of my favorite videos and instructional videos are. We can find you on Facebook, Instagram. Thank you for doing everything that you do. But I, like I said before, I don't think people know that you work for Bones & Co., yep. which is a raw food company. Um, one of my favorites uh, that, you know, I have vetted and love the owners. Uh, so I am um, very happy to promote this wonderful food. And as many of you know, listening to me, uh, when we had the whole Answers Pet Food debacle and why I don't carry or recommend Answers Pet Food anymore, my stores in Florida, I had very few choices. So I have been on the phone uh, haunting Rachel for, gosh, years now yep. going, when can <laughs> I get your food? So I'm so excited to finally have um, Bones & Co's, I think, full line now. I think we have everything now. And my dogs finally get to eat your food, and they love it. Uh, didn't even hesitate, wolfed it down. And my favorite part is that all of your recipes are ketogenic recipes. Yep. And the other favorite part about your company um, that you work for that I love is that you do not do HPP, um, which those of you who know what it is, awesome. Those of you who don't, it's probably the most confusing thing about raw food because when I, when you find a good raw food company and there are a few, um, Susan Thixton's The Truth About Pet Food has a full list for you. Her 2022 list is out and Bones and Company, of course, is on it. Um, we uh, have to understand that even if a company starts right, answers being the perfect example, it doesn't mean it's gonna stay that way. And often in the holistic pet industry, supplements, food included, I feel like the good guys who create it, there's someone that comes in and goes, we need to make more money, and so we do something quicker, faster, change the organic ingredients, whatever it is. I've only been in the pet industry for six years now, and I cannot tell you how many times this has already happened, and I have to change things I'm carrying. But HPP stands for high pressure processing. Yep. Is that what it stands for? And HPP is a process that, it, the whole reason that we are going for raw food is to get the beneficial benefits from everything that exists in that raw, unprocessed food. HPP is a form of processing that kills many of those beneficial compounds that we want in the food in the first place. So if a raw food company is doing HPP, it's kind of like, well, you're kind of defeating the purpose. Why the heck are you doing that? Along with the fact that some of my favorite, uh, when I opened up my second store and had more room to uh, offer more great brands, 
literally couldn't find more than five that I could get in my stores. Even when I started with someone like Steve's Real Food, who is a great advocate and against HPP, he sold his company. So now Steve's Real Food is HPP processed. And I'm like, wait, no, I just saw an interview with Dr. Becker. You know? I know. So tell people why it's so important to make sure. And how do they know that? When they're looking at a raw food brand, how the heck do they know whether they're it's been processed like that or not? Yeah, you know, so you can actually tell. So first off, you can always ask the manufacturer, right? It's not something that you'll usually see on the bag, but you can actually tell by looking at the food. Uh, when I'm talking to pet parents or a retailer that's never heard of Bones & Co. and, you know, they want to learn more and, you know, they're already in love with some other brands, etc. I'm like, all you have to do is take one of our patties out and compare it to any other patty right? And you're going to see that difference in our food. So what I mean by that is it's going to be more vibrant, more red in color. Um, we use what we call a country style grind. It just means that we keep it as large as we can, the, the grind. So you can actually see the meat, you can see the fat, you can see the crushed bone in there. Um, but you'll be able to see that when you watch our patties defrost, uh, there'll be a little bit of blood coming out, which is good. That's where nutrients are. But when it is HPP and, and other brands, for example, comparative, they're going to be more gray looking, uh, usually tougher in consistency. And that's what I love about it is you don't have to do a special test. You can see with your very own eyes, like a, a real raw patty versus one that has been overly processed and pasteurized. Yeah. It doesn't look like real food anymore. Yeah, exactly. Because so, basically, we, yeah. you're taking raw, fresh ingredients and grinding them up. Of course, it is um, nutritionally balanced. How do you make sure it's nutritionally balanced? So we work with a veterinarian nutritionist that will actually help with the formulation and the recipes of our of our foods. Um, and she is also uh, metabolically metabolic health focused. So that's really helpful, which we can talk about in a moment when it comes to keto. Uh, but that's really important to us because the formulation or the recipe, if you will, is is really everything. Good. And let's talk about keto because I know uh, I hear there's so many diet fads and this is a diet. I don't know if I want to call it a fad. I'm not a nutritionist, but that exists out there that when I heard it being applied to animal health, I'm like, oh, come on. What are they doing right? now? Um, but no. There is real science behind it, and it makes total sense. And those of you who are following uh, Nina, my Doberman with osteosarcoma's mm -hmm. journey, this is the number one thing I do for her um, besides the cannabis treatment is a ketogenic diet. What the heck is it, and why is it good for not only our dogs, but especially good for dogs that are battling a disease? Yeah, so ketogenic diet it is actually... a dietetic set of tools uh, to help a dog achieve the most optimal metabolic state, which is ketosis. So to simplify, keto simply means uh, low carb and high in healthy fats and moderate in I'm, I'm seeing protein. you TikTok now. So I got her on video and you're already doing your pointing. Yeah, I'm doing that. The, the there keto we go, there is we go. good this, good that, good that. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> get the hands going in. <laughs> I am. It's true. It starts coming out because I get very passionate about it. But with a keto diet, it's just very simple, low carb, high in healthy fats and protein. Uh, and why this is so important is, first off, it is the most natural way for a dog to eat. Mark Roberts, he's a PhD. I'm sure you you might have seen his interview with, with Rodney and Dr. Becker. But he actually did a study uh, of domestic dogs where he fed them uh a variety of macronutrients, fat, protein, and carbs, and let them eat as much as they wanted. Some of them were more domestic, like pet type dogs, and some of them were more of the uh, working dogs, but they were all domestic. And what he found through these studies is they all chose a one-to-one -one fat to protein ratio, which is what that keto is. It means it's very low in carb when given the opportunity to select what they wanted to select for optimal health. And of course, he measured all their bio health markers throughout and found that they were incredibly healthy doing so because he's done you know years and years of, of research on metabolic health in dogs and wanted to, in a sense, prove that this is a more natural way for a dog to eat. So it's it's important because of that, that it replicates a way that a dog uh, wants and desires to get their nutrients. And then secondly, 
what it's doing is it's actually transforming the metabolism. So what I mean by that is if we kind of back up into why we started crafting a keto diet, again, low carb, high in healthy fats and protein, was because we n noticed and saw that there is really an epidemic when it comes to our dog's health. And this was years ago, but it's even more profound today. And that is that, you know, 6 million dogs a year are diagnosed with cancer. We all, many of us know that, that number, but what that breaks down to is the dog's chance of getting cancer is one in three over the age of 10, it's one in two, which is startling. Uh, and I, you know, I believe that we as an industry aren't even talking about that enough. I mean, myself included, like, it's just so it's horrific. Um, and if we look at obesity, over almost 60% of dogs are overweight. Uh, diabetes is growing triple digits every year in dogs. And then we now look at uh, seizures and epilepsy is the now the number one neurological condition in dogs. And what's interesting about all of these conditions that are impacting our dogs at epidemic levels is that they're all rooted in the metabolism. Metabolic health is incredibly important for prevention, and treating in both of these. And so when we were looking at how we wanted to craft a food, we knew that the biggest issue we wanted to address were these metabolic diseases. We were like, okay, well then we need a food that's metabolically appropriate, a food that would set dogs up for ultimate metabolic health. And that is a keto diet, both in humans and dogs, which is really, really interesting. And so what it does in the body is when your dog is going through ketosis, and that's the byproduct of eating a keto diet, they're actually burning fat for fuel uh, instead of storing it. So if we take it back to biology 101, I'll keep it very simple here, but we have two different metabolic pathways uh, that both us as humans and dogs go through when they are uh, generating or making energy. The first being glycolysis, and that's what any dog that's eating a higher carb diet, like a dry kibble or a wet food, or even a raw food that's lower in meat and higher in produce. And what's happening with that is that they are going to have blood sugar spikes, insulin spikes, so you're going to have that hormonal impact, um, which leads to inflammation. Uh, and as we all know, inflammation is the root of all evil, in my opinion, at least. And, uh, and then what's happening is the body is going to store that fat. And instead of using it. And so what happens in that situation is when stored fat and when fat is stored in excess levels in the body, it leads to even more inflammation. And that's why we have dogs that, you know, are over six, almost 60% of dogs are overweight. And um, then if we go to the other metabolic pathway where dogs can get energy, that's ketosis. And that's what a keto diet promotes. And the difference there is the dog is going to have minimal blood sugar and insulin spikes. So it's gonna have less of an inflammatory response, which is why keto is widely known and researched in both canines and humans as an anti-inflammatory diet, because what it's doing is instead of relying on carbs as the primary fuel source, it's putting fat to work. And fat is um, not being stored in the body. So it's actually being burned for energy which is both anti-inflammatory, but it's also the most optimal way to get energy because fat yields two and a half times more energy than carbohydrates, which is why when you're, when you're in ketosis and you're burning fat for fuel, it's what we call a fat burner or you're fat adapted, it's why you a big part of that is fasting because you have so much um, ketones, which are those energy reserves, you can actually go, you know, two, three days, like as a human, uh, you can do like a 48 hour fast and, and feel alive and energized because you're having so many of those energy reserves. So that's why it's really Im important for dogs is it's much less of, um, <clears throat> it's much, it's much more about putting their metabolic health um, as a priority. I love it. And putting real food as a priority. And the reason that you're going yep. to see those grains and carbohydrates in your dog's kibble is because they're cheap and, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're yep. mass produced in our country. And all of those turn into is sugar, which turns around and feeds 
things like cancer. So you absolutely don't want to yep. give the disease the food it needs to take over the entire body, which is why I have a Doberman with osteosarcoma who's 17 months from diagnosis and has no metastasis because we are not giving her body anything that will feed that disease, meaning no toxins in the air and anything that gets put mm -hmm. on her. Um, over vaccinations, flea and tick meds, none of that gets put on her. And this is a this is a cancer I couldn't avoid. It's hereditary. Most large breed dogs are suffering from it. But what I could do is that I can support her immune system to help keep it from spreading and you know eventually killing her. So we're breaking records by purely just feeding her a real uh, food diet, ketogenic diet supporting her endocannabinoid system by keeping the inflammation down um, and keeping the cancer from spreading, the use of medicinal mushrooms. I know you have Haven, your 15-year-old cat that you've had um, who wasn't feeling well. You think that maybe she has a brain tumor or something. So you've had some experience using CBD Dog Health Heal tincture for her? I have. And, you know, she had, uh, it was... The first time in a long time I had left her for a trip. And so I still feel guilty about that. But my husband called me frantically and said, Haven just had a seizure. And this was uh, two years ago. Oh, two, yeah, two years ago now. And she was perfectly healthy up until then. And uh, so I was like, well, take her to the vet. So he takes her to the emergency vet. And um, then we do several follow-ups. And it's pretty apparent she probably has a brain lesion or you know, brain tumor. And so, you know, I reached out to, to your team. <laughs> I was like, I'm panicking. I don't know what to do. Like, uh, she's, cause she since then had these uh, little uh, twitches that she would do, which the vet was suspicious. They were probably little mini seizures or convulsions. And so I'm like, okay, I, you know, I know that I need to get her in a more anti inflammatory uh, state. And Bones Co. doesn't have a cat food yet, so I had to figure out something. And so I started using CBD Dog Health, and I was really nervous because I didn't know, you know, I was worried I was going to give her too much. It was the first time I really used it in a medicinal way. And, uh, but you guys were just so uh, helpful, responsive. I'm a little bit of a paranoid dog mom, so, you know, my hesitation, I think, made me nervous, but you guys just, I like, felt like you held my hand physically were there with me in a really difficult time. So I'm very appreciative of that. And so I started uh, give micro dosing her and starting with small. And then uh, now I just give her her doses three times a day. And she hasn't had a seizure since. Uh, and this is over two years. And her little twitches are very few and far in between. And she seems extremely comfortable. Uh, we had a, a senior wellness checkup not that like a few months ago, and she's as awesome. healthy as can be. I mean, she's getting older, right? But for her age, is doing great. And she takes the CBD Yay. like a champ, you know. Like I, I was really worried about giving it to her, and she's not always the, the sweetest <laughs> kitty. So, uh, but she, but she, but she takes it just fine. And um, now my dogs, they take it. My Labrador, you know, I did everything wrong with him. Uh, you know, he's he just turned twelve, and you know, the first four or five years of his life, I over vaccinated, early neuter, um, you know, I had the plug in, I, lo I love air that, fresheners, I, love I uh, the kibble, we are, we're not judging, we came, yeah. from, I came from that place. Also, yeah. we believed everything that our conventional vet did, we believe yeah. we don't believe that we're going to plug something in our walls, and it's going to poison us and our pets. So we're never judging. And I also want people to know that it's never too late. Yeah. I have taken senior geriatric yeah. dogs filled with cancer and added another two, three years of their life, quality of life, happy, no pain. And I'm just doing diet and medical cannabis or a full spectrum hemp extract. All right. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm so happy that your pets are benefiting, but we have a question from the audience. Yeah. So I, our listeners, so we want to Great. I know it has to do with food. So I wanted to include you on this uh, question. So let's play that question. Great. This is Odie, my baby old man, AKA Barky Von Schnauzer. He's 11 years old and the love of my life. So Odie's favorite thing is to run up the stairs at night when we go to bed. And I noticed a couple years ago that he would stop midway up. And that's when I knew he was suffering from arthritis and joint pain. 
So the only treatments that I was being offered were harmful prescription drugs that cause liver damage and suppress the immune system, and I just wasn't willing to do that for my senior dog. And full spectrum CBD oil was the only thing that worked. I would give it to him and literally within 15 minutes he was puppy-like again. I could see that he wasn't in pain, he wasn't panting, he was running up the stairs. So on Odie I use Ease, which is a 550 milligram full spectrum CBD oil with frankincense essential oil, turmeric and hemp oil, and it's great for arthritis, aches and pains, and allergies. No one likes to see their dog suffer. I know I didn't. And to be able to find an all natural product that doesn't cause additional harm and helps them is a lifesaver for me and it brings me so much peace of mind. CBD Dog Health, healing naturally. Awesome, we touched a little bit on that already. A, um, if we hadn't already talked about how important it is to feed a puppy a real food, fresh food diet in the um, in the beginning stages of its life. But yeah, help our pet parents. Let's say we are somewhere that we can't get your food. Um, what are tips of how that, because I know that I would love to be able to make my own dog's food, but there's no way. I have too many. Sometimes I do and I'll store yeah. it and do it throughout the day, but it's too much. So I always tell people, it, find that trusted company that is doing it right but it's very hard to find. So let's say we live somewhere. She's in Dallas. She can get Bones and Company, right? Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, but how can, can people, company, if they yeah. can't get your brand, how do we know um, how to pick a good brand? A, you gave us the tip yeah, of what I mean, it should look like great. if it's keto, and I love that. So we're going to use that. Yeah. What else can they look for um, when choosing a company? So for me, and, you know, I didn't really address this before, but I really, I jumped to the guaranteed analysis um, on the back of the bag as one of the first places that and the nutritional ingredients, which we can talk about in a minute, but the guaranteed analysis is going to tell you quite a bit. It's, it's definitely um, an estimate, right? Because it's a min and a max. But if you look at like Bones & Co, for example, when you look at that, you're actually going to see that the fat and protein ratio is going to be about a one-to-one -one ratio. And what you can do is a rough estimate to see a good estimate of how the how many carbohydrates are in that food is you can take all those values uh, under the guaranteed analysis. You're gonna see moisture, maybe fiber. If you're feeding a kibble, maybe ash is in there. Take all those numbers, you add them up and you subtract them from 100. That's gonna be a good general rough estimate of the number of carbohydrates in there. Um, and, you know, with Bones & Co, we're average one to maybe 4% uh, carbohydrates at most. So very, very low in carbs. But if you can't get Bones & Co, then I would look for that first off, right? Um, and getting as low carb as, as possible is how I would look for it. The second would, of course, be the ingredient deck is what I would look at. I would avoid foods that have a vitamin pack. The way that you know, these are like synthetic vitamins. The way that you can uh, identify that is, first off, you can ask the manufacturer, right? But second off, you can just see that the last half of the ingredients are usually longer words that are maybe complicated to read. Uh, and the uh, Bones & Co. ingredients, you're, it's a very short list. That's and it's one of my favorite things to do no at, when I'm actually at the shop. And I go, do me a favor. Go home. Yep. I want you to look at the, your, your ingredients on the back of your dog food bag. And let me know if you can pronounce all of them or even know what they are. And then here is yep. this food that we carry here in the store. As you can see, there's five, six ingredients and everything you know what it is. Yep. That is real food. That is the easiest way both for us and for our pets to find real food. Also, learn about the company. Learn how they're doing things, what their intent is. Yep. Can you find the owner? Why, why is, why does this food company yeah. exist? Who is the owner? What is their, what is their backing? Are they trained? Do they know anything about nutrition? Um, so I think intent is a huge thing we've added, um, because there's people out there who are just out to make money and are in the pet food industry or in the pet industry because it's so unregulated and people can get away with murder. Um, so Rachel, tell yeah, everybody yeah. how they can follow you. Keep follow you on all of your platforms because you have such wonderful information and where they can find more information on Bones & Co. Absolutely. So 
for Bones & Co., uh, you can just find us anywhere, YouTube, our website. It's thebonesandco.com or at the Bones and Co. Um, and then for myself, it's just my name, Rachel Fasaro, on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. YouTube's probably my largest uh, platform. Awesome. And I'd Thank love to you, connect Rachel, with you so there. much for joining us today. It was awesome information. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you.